Hi, this is Samir Zafikar and you are watching Social Sciences. In the previous video, we have already discussed that biological differences uh, divide the human population into categories of male and female. Today, we are going to discuss about gender and social certification. So, in order to revise the whole concept of sex and gender, uh, let me tell you once again that sex is defined as biological aspect whereas gender describes the personal traits and social positions that member of a society attached to being male or female. Sociologists observed uh, that gender shapes the worldview of the individual. It shapes how we interact with others and even how we think about ourselves. And also it positions both genders in different hierarchies that is men are placed higher as compared to women in terms of power, wealth and other resources. So we can say that gender shapes the whole life of a person. It provides opportunities to one and constrain the other. It is believed that the distinction between both genders is biological in nature. Uh, differences in physical ability between the sexes do exist. Uh, we admit that. On average, males are 10% taller than females and 20% heavier and 30% stronger, uh, especially in the upper body. On the other hand, women outperform men in the ultimate game of life itself. Life expectancy for men is 76.4 years and women can expect to live 81.2 years. But we must be careful not to think of social differences in biological terms. In 1848, for example, women were denied the vote because many people assumed that women did not have enough intelligence or any interest in politics. Such attitudes had nothing to do with biology. They reflected the cultural patterns of that time and place. So we should keep this point in our mind. Researchers show that in adolescence, uh, males do a bit better on the mathematics while females show stronger writing skills. Uh, researchers claim that these differences reflect both biology and socialization. However, such researches do not prove any overall differences in intelligence between males and females. In every society, people assume that certain jobs, patterns of behavior, and ways of dressing are naturally feminine, while others are masculine. The anthropologist Margaret Mead uh, carried out uh, her research on gender. And she says that if gender is based in the biological differences between men and women, she reasoned, people everywhere should define fem feminine and masculine in the same way. If gender is cultural, these concepts should vary from place to place. And we observe this, that in every society we have different notions associated with gender. Now let's uh, discuss about patriarchy and sexism because whenever we talk about gender and social stratification, we always encounter such terminologies. Patriarchy is the most common practice throughout the globe. It is a form of social organization in which a male dominate women. There is great variation in the relative power and privilege of women that exist from country to country. According to Gender Parity Index, Pakistan ranked 151 out of 153, only managing to surpass Iraq and Yemen. The justification of patriarchy is based on sexism, the belief that one sex is innately superior to the other. Sexism is not just a matter of individual attitudes, it is also built into the institution of society. Institutional sexism is found throughout the economy, with women highly concentrated in low-paying jobs. Economic opportunities for women in Pakistan are limited with the country only managing to bridge 32.7% of the gap between men and women in the workplace. Unfortunately, sexism limits the talents and the ambitions of the half of the human population, who are women. 
although men benefit in some respects from sexism their privileges come at a high price masculinity in our culture encourages men to engage in many high risk behaviors using tobacco and alcohol uh, playing dangerous sports and even driving recklessly now the question is must patriarchy go on to answer this question we have to analyze the socio economic conditions of the societies in pre industrial societies women have little control over pregnancy and childbirth which limits the scope of their lives in those same societies men's greater height and physical strength are valued resources that give them power but with industrialization including birth control technology increases people's choices about how to live In societies like our own, biological differences offer little justification for patriarchy. But males are socially dominant throughout the globe. Does this mean that patriarchy is inevitable? Some researchers claim that biological factors such as differences in hormones and slight differences in brain structure, uh, why the two sexes with different motivations and behavior especially aggressiveness in males making patriarchy difficult or perhaps even impossible to change however most sociologists believe that gender is socially constructed and can be changed the fact that no society has completely eliminated patriarchy does not mean that we must remain prisoners of the past To understand why patriarchy continues today, we must examine how gender is rooted and reproduced in society. A process that begins in childhood and continues throughout our lives. Different socializing agents perform their cultural role in carving strong gender identities. The difference between pink and blue world started from the birth and continues till last breath. Research has shown that when new parents were asked about their children they refer girls as soft, pretty and sensitive whereas boys were called as tough and strong. The initial narration of both genders clearly explained the existing gender difference in an interesting way. So we can say that family as an important socializing agent perform a very crucial role in creating the gender divide between males and females later on when kids enter school here again gender differences enforced by the peer groups we can easily observe that boys always involve themselves in such games where they can showcase their power and aggression and girls rarely bother about winner or losers they not only play games but also engage game engage in different activities with their group members to promote the interpersonal skills of communication and cooperation presumably it provide base for girls future roles as wives and mothers subject selection also creates divide between both genders as girls are more engaged in arts and sectarian subjects whereas boys are more interested in mechanical subjects and if we talk about media as a socializing agent we can clearly see that media is also playing a crucial role uh, in promoting gender divide advertisements have shown women in the home cheerfully using cleaning products serving food trying out appliances and modeling clothes men predominates in these advertisements for cars travel banking services industrial companies and co- and and many other things a careful study of gender in advertising reveals that men usually appear taller than women implying male superiority women uh, by contrast are more frequently presented lying down a men's facial expressions and behavior give off an air of competence and imply dominance a uh, woman often appear childlike submissive and sexual Men focuses on the product being advertised and women often focus on the men. So here we can clearly see that how different socializing agents are playing their role to enforce the gender divide in our society. 
Different organizations of society treat women in a biased way, thus creating a clear divide between both genders by placing men in powerful position and women as a subject. Society and culture shapes women-dependent behavior by not providing equal access to resources and opportunities. According to the statistic of UNDP, uh, women comprise more than 50% of the world population and they only own 1% of the world's wealth. Additionally, researchers show that the greatest gender gaps are identified primarily in the Middle East, Africa and South Asia and uh, unfortunately Pakistan ranked on second last position in the Global Gender Gap Index that illustrates the deteriorating condition of women in country. In the end, we can say that all these discussed aspects clearly show that culture play a very important role in the stratification of gender. Now share your views in the comment section below how gender stratification affects the lives of the women in our society. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe to my channel.